George Osborne has just unveiled his pre-election budget. I'm here with Janan Ganesh, the Financial Times chief political commentator. Janan, did the economics add up first? Well, he went into this parliament wanting to more or less eliminate the structural deficit and to get debt heading down. He hasn't done the first, he has just about done the second. And when you take into account the broader context of employment going up, uh, we're into our third year of growth. It's a reasonably encouraging economic picture in total. But I actually thought the most interesting thing he did was slightly take the edge off his fiscal consolidation. Labour have been attacking it as too extreme. They say it's going to take Britain back to the 1930s. That might be an exaggerated claim, but it was a politically effective one. And so he's walked on. back from Wigan Pier? Well, he has walked back from Wigan Pier, and he's, it's, a, it's a slightly softened but still tough fiscal programme he's got ahead of him. Not quite Orwellian, but uh, the surplus he's aiming for at the end of the next parliament has fallen by quite a bit, which means he has a bit of room to spend more on government departments, which have already shrunk massively since 2010. And he's looking at um, a share of public spending share of GDP of around 36%, which he says was around 2,000. Does that feel uh, reasonable? Well, Labour will say in 2000 this country needed uh, more public spending and schools and hospitals were in a poor way. So he's taking it back too far, even if it is only back to, to, uh, to the year 2000. I think Labour will have a tough time making that stick. It's, it's tough to get the average British person to think that 2000 was some kind of desolation and wasteland. Um, and given that we still have massive debt as, as a share of GDP, we still have a very large fiscal deficit. I don't think it's entirely unreasonable to aim to turn the clock back uh, 15 years, if not uh, the better part of a century. And what do you make of George Osborne's talk about a savings revolution in Britain? Well, the Treasury has, has suspected that a lot of savers feel they, they've been hard done by by low interest rates in recent years, which have been necessary to stimulate the economy. And so they've tried in recent years to encourage savers generally and pensioners in particular They've allowed pensioners to access their pension pots instead of forcing them to buy annuities, which they did last year. And now they're trying to introduce tax cuts uh, for savers of, of all ages. I wonder how effective that realistically can be until interest rates in the long term go up. I would assume that's a far bigger determinant of where, uh, and, uh, where people put their money. And Mr. Osborne had several good jokes, uh, notably at the expense of Mr. Miliband with his two kitchens and also the, uh, or one fairly small kitchen, yeah. but also the French. He's got a million pounds for the Agencourt Memorial Fund. And he also claimed that Yorkshire is producing more jobs or has produced more jobs than in the whole of France. Yeah, I'm sure there are people at the French embassy fact-checking that as we speak. But <laughs> it, it, was, it was quite an entertaining performance. And it suggests that he feels more relaxed, certainly, than he did a few years ago when I think he, he was visibly nervous, the economy wasn't going anywhere, his political prospects... about three years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, he was booed during the Paralympics in 2012, the economy wasn't growing, his own personal prospects as a politician seemed pretty limited. So I think he's loosened up a bit because of the good news and he can deliver that kind of performance. And what do you think this will mean for the election? Is it, is it a decisive budget or is it a holding budget? I don't think any budget on its own decides an election and this is no exception. What a budget can do is crystallise the existing message that a party is giving to the public. And I thought the budget did that. So the message is the economy we inherited was awful. We, the Conservative Party, are fixing it slowly. Don't let Labour interrupt us and take us back to where we were. Whatever you think of that message, you might find it a bit dreary. It is a simple message, and Labour at the moment have about seven or eight different messages and can't settle on one. So this budget, I think, embodied uh, a, a Linton Crosbyite election campaign. He's the campaign manager from Australia. The, uh, the, um, uh, the guy who won four elections with John Howard. A very plain message, quite plodding almost, but simple, and I suspect for a lot of swing voters, ultimately quite persuasive. Janan Ganesh, thank you very much.